Up next, we have Leanne O'Bannon uh, with senior author uh, Masaki Kaguchi. It's a multi-institution study on type 4 hypersensitivity reaction after uh, cyanocrylate venous closure. Hey, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, and thank you for the opportunity to present our work on type 4 hypersensitivity reaction after uh, cyanocrylate venous closure. <coughs> Here are disclosures. Uh, Medtronic was not involved in the study design, data analysis, or decision to submit for publication. Uh, chronic venous insufficiency represents a $2 billion healthcare um, burden to the healthcare system annually. Um, thermal ablation has been the mainstay of treatment for decades, but it's limited by the risk of thermal nerve injury. Newer non thermal modalities have been developed, including cyanoacrylate glue closure, which has been FDA approved since 2017. Data from the WAVES and VCLOSE trials showed both safety and efficacy with EGIT rates as low as 1.3 percent and closure rates approaching 98 percent. However, a unique reaction specific to cyanoacrylate closure has been observed, namely type 4 hypersensitivity reaction. <coughs> it's defined as a red, itchy dermal reaction that's sometimes painless but sometimes associated with discomfort and or localized swelling. And Gibson et al. reviewed 313 procedures from the WAVES and VCLOSE trials, noting a 6% incidence, of which 28% of the patients which were treated with oral steroids. Joe et al. reported a 25% incidence of phlebitis-like abnormal reaction in 271 procedures in a single institution retrospective study. We hypothesized that the real-world incidence may be higher due to underreporting in these smaller studies. And our aim was to delineate the real-world incidence of type 4 hypersensitivity reaction after cyanoacrylate closure, uh, and to delineate the risk factors that predispose to developing hypersensitivity so that patient selection may be improved and um, when deciding on treatment modality. <coughs> this was a multi-institutional retrospective review of patients treated between 2017 and 2022 at four sites, UCSF Fresno, Swedish Hospital North Shore, MedStar Hospital, Georgetown, and University of Pittsburgh. All patients were offered uh, thermal and available thermal and non-thermal ablation techniques based on SVS uh, practice guidelines with uh, duplex ultrasound demonstrating axial reflux greater than 500 milliseconds um, and vein diameters greater than three and a half millimeters. Procedure choice was determined by both shared patient and uh, physician decision as well as insurance authorization. Patients with known cyanoacrylate allergy or acrylic um, allergy to acrylic derivatives were excluded. All patients were treated um, uh, uh, based on IFU guidelines with a single antigrade puncture. <coughs> the primary endpoint was um, development of type 4 hypersensitivity post treatment. We also looked at a secondary endpoint of the need for treatment with oral steroids, and this was offered for patients with severe or persistent symptoms. Uh, we collected baseline demographic information, comorbidities, and C classification. We performed a logistic regression analysis to uh, determine the risk factors for developing type 4 hypersensitivity. 881 cyanoacrylate closure procedures were analyzed in 595 patients. The mean age was 66. Two thirds of the patients were female. Half of the patients were Caucasian and a quarter Hispanic. Many patients were obese with a mean BMI of 31. Um, the incidence of type 4 hypersensitivity was about 13%. 79 of 595 patients developed this. Um, and the rate in terms of the procedures was about 10%. Uh, no patients had a systemic um, allergic reaction or anaphylaxis. And all patients had complete resolution of symptoms. Uh, none required vein excision. Um, univariate analysis um, showed that <coughs> younger, um, younger age was um, uh, associated with development of type 4 hypersensitivity. Of note, um, medication, presence of medication allergy, the number of allergies, and the presence of autoimmune disorder were not associated with developing type 4 hypersensitivity. Um, Univariate analysis also showed that advanced sieve class was associated with developing hypersensitivity um, and as well as the type of vein treated. Uh, further investigation with multivariate analysis showed that younger age, active smoking status, 
And SEEP class three and four were uh, statistically significantly associated with developing type four hypersensitivity. Um, however, um, vein type treated actually was not. Uh, interestingly, there was a trend towards lower um, rate of hypersensitivity in CEP class 6 patients for unclear reasons. Um, so this type 4 hypersensitivity reaction is mediated by T cells. Um, and of note, we found that smoking appears to be a risk factor. We know that smoking provokes an uh, inflammatory response in the vasculature. And this data supports um, a connection between uh, pre-existing inflammatory conditions um, uh, being a risk factor for developing type 4 hypersensitivity. Um, now, there was no association between autoimmune disorders um, and type 4 hypersensitivity in this uh, study. However, it may be that um, some of the, these patients were already on chronic immunosuppression or steroids at the time of treatment, and so this may be difficult to tease out. Uh, type 4 hypersensitivity um, is, should be a recognized um, adverse event that's um, not infrequent uh, and should be discussed with tr patients ahead of time and treated swiftly if necessary. Um, in all patients, treatment with NSAIDs and or oral steroid taper uh, resolved their symptoms quickly. Uh, limitations of the study, uh, this is an, a retrospective review with its inherent biases um, that, um, uh, you know, compared to a randomized study. Um, and Although the definition of type 4 hypersensitivity is well defined, patient self-reporting may vary uh, if their symptoms are transient or, you know, if there's a lack of follow-up. So in fact, these numbers may be underreported. The, in conclusion, the overall incidence of type 4 sensitivity appears to be about 10 percent, um, not uncommon. Uh, independent risk factors associated with type 4 hypersensitivity include SEEP class 3 uh, and 4 patients, younger age, active smoking status. Um, Sanoacrylate closure is uh, safe. All uh, hypersensitivity reactions were self-limited, and only a minority of patients required treatment with oral steroids. Uh, type 4 hypersensitivity should be uh, recognized and treated swiftly. Um, and in the future, further higher-powered studies may be needed to explore the risk factors for type 4 hypersensitivity, which may impact patient selection um, and affect patient education uh, to improve patient reported um, outcome measures. Thank you. Hi, uh, Karan Garg, uh, New York and Georgia talk. How do you differentiate the type four hypersensitive sensitivity reaction from just a like an awful phlebitis? Like do you have to like check labs because if you get a really bad phlebitis, I kind of treat them with NSAIDs and warm compresses. So how do you sort of tell the difference between the two? <coughs> That's a great question. I, you know, I know that, you know, the pathophysiology may be different, but it may be clinically difficult to distinguish the two. Um, I think that the ultimate treatment um, is the same. Um, so I'm not sure that um, it's possible to really distinguish it without um, deeper testing. Did you look at treatment length? Uh, to see if there was any correlation, like the longer the longer segment of a vein was, was treated, maybe they were more higher reaction. Or uh, great question as well. Uh, uh, in that Joe paper, they found that um, the uh, abnormal phlebitis-like reaction was more prevalent in uh, GSV treatment with a longer vein length. Um, we specifically didn't find this difference um, initially in univariate analysis. We thought there was a tendency um, toward uh, GSV. Um, and you would think that with higher um, uh, burden of cyanoacrylate, maybe there's more exposure, and that increases the risk for uh, hypersensitivity reaction. But on multivariate analysis, there was, no, there was no difference, interestingly. Were you able to see in the, uh, the data at all, was there a, someone who had a type 4 hypersensitivity on one leg, and then they had a procedure done the next time with cyanoacrylate? Did they get, were they at a higher chance of having that happen again? Uh, so the interesting thing is some of these patients uh, developed hypersensitivity um, in one procedure but didn't develop it in subsequent procedures. Um, and I don't know if that's, you know, related to a procedural factor with um, when you pull out the sheath and expose the glue to the tissue or something like that. But the, the actual um, rate of um, hypersensitivity was lower um, in, uh, in procedures than, than patients. 
So some patients, they didn't get hypersensitivity every time. Great, thank you.